Cyprus is a treasure house of UNESCO World Cultural Heritage Sites. On no other Mediterranean island are there so many magnificent Byzantine art treasures as on Cyprus. The works from this period include icons, frescoes and mosaics dating back over 1,500 years. On July 15, 1974, the Greek colonels in Athens staged a coup against the president of Cyprus, Archbishop Makarios III. Five days later, on July 20th, came the Turkish invasion of the northern part of the Republic. 165,000 people fled from the Turkish troops to the south. The whole of the north, 36% of the territory of the Republic, is still occupied by Turkish troops and Nicosia is to this day a divided city. After the invasion, there was a systematic destruction and plundering of all the Orthodox churches and monasteries in the Turkish-occupied north by order of senior officers. These were no Turkish Cypriots. Like the Armenian monastery, all the sacred Orthodox buildings have fallen victim to vandalism and art theft. Archbishop Chrysostomos explains. Γίνει αρκετοί μουσουλμανικά τεμένοι και λειτουργούν ω η αυτά. Έχουν αρκετοί να δυστυχώ γίνουν αποθήκε διάφορων αντικειμένων. Έχουν γίνει κέντρα διασκεδάσεω. With brute force, like voracious treasure seekers, people behaved like animals and literally tore frescoes out of the churches. Top quality UNESCO World Heritage artworks were destroyed, like the head of the Archangel Michael from the Church of Christ Antiphonitis, which dates from around 1190. Numerous artworks were not only destroyed during the robberies, but are now lost forever. The robbers were followed by merciless experts from international art dealerships. Using the latest methods, they removed the frescoes from the walls in order to be able to put them on the market in as sound a condition as possible. The wall fresco from the Church of Christ Antiphonitis, dating from the end of the 15th century, showing the tree of Jesse, was taken apart to order. The art collectors were shown a photo of the whole fresco, picked out the head that they wanted, and ordered it for a high price and only then was that detail of the fresco removed from the wall. Numerous icons and elaborate carvings from the icon screens, frescoes and icons from Antiphonitis and other churches in the Turkish-occupied sector of Cyprus, worth more than 30 million euros, were found by the Munich CID in 1997 during a search of the house of Aydin Dikmen, a Turk living in Munich. 
the Republic of Cyprus is still waiting in vain today for the return of the artworks. Kyrenia, the most beautiful port in the Republic, is picturesquely situated at the point on the coast where the Pendadaktilos mountain range runs down to the sea. Until the Turkish invasion in 1974, some 4,000 Greek and 800 Turkish Cypriots lived in Kyrenia. Today, 28,000 Turks live here. Turks from Ankara, Istanbul and Anatolia, with Turkish Cypriots forming a small minority. The demographic changes enforced by Ankara in 1974 create grave problems. In 1974, a total of 501,000 Greek and 116,000 Turkish Cypriots lived on the island, whilst today there are 730,000 Greek Cypriots plus 220,000 other people in the occupied sector of the Republic, of whom only about 85,000 can be regarded as Turkish Cypriots. Even this Christian site, famous in the life of St. Barnabas, nephew of St. Mark the Evangelist, fell victim to art theft after 1974. The monastery, which is open to tourists today as an icon museum, is a farce. Nothing remains of the original precious decoration of the church. Worthless icons of the 19th and 20th century are exhibited here in a haphazard manner, whilst the museum is self-proclaimed as the savior of the Christian art of Cyprus. <laughs> Often the search for plundered churches is made difficult by the fact that all the Greek place names were changed to Turkish on orders from Ankara. <laughs> In Lisi, we met Turkish Cypriots from Paphos in the south of the island who'd left their homes in 1974, allegedly voluntarily, but in reality with incentives, sometimes threats from Ankara. Mustafa Shevket helpfully showed us the way. He's able to report in detail on the plundering under the watchful eyes of the soldiers. Inside the church, we're shocked. Chaos reigns, nothing but chaos. Here, not only have art thieves been at work, but there's also been wanton destruction. Nervously, Mustafa tells us in almost perfect Greek.